In Arkansas, we love our pigs, our hogs. They're cute, inquisitive, and make great barbecue. In Fayetteville, the home of the University of Arkansas, the mascot is a Razorback. In 1910, after a hard-fought battle against LSU, in which the coach said the team played like a band of wild hogs, the school changed its name from the Cardinals to the Razorbacks. In the next few decades, a hog call was created, and now a whole state calls the hogs at football games and other sporting events. It's really the state song. In Fayetteville, we love our hogs so much that we even have flying hogs that are works of art strategically placed around town. Like most rural Arkansans in the 19th and early 20th century, my grandfather, who lived in Columbia County, had 10 to 20 pigs that would range freely down in the creek bottoms. In the fall, he would call them back to the house, encouraging them with some corn, and slaughter several to feed his family during the winter. Some might argue that Arkansas is unmatched in its affinity for wild hogs, but not caged hogs. But more recently, hogs are being raised in very high densities not allowed to forage freely or be in pastures, only confined to inside of cages or pens their entire lives. The goal is for the sows to produce as many litters as possible. These large-scale factories are commonly known as concentrated animal feeding operations, or CAFOs. Huge multinational corporations such as Cargill are the main driver behind the stop of operation and own the hogs that the farmer raises. This past year, such an operation was permitted by the Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality to operate in Mount Judy, Arkansas, without providing adequate public notification or taking into consideration its proximity to the first national river, the Buffalo National River, less than six miles downstream. Hidden in the Ozark Mountains of northern Arkansas is the first national wild river designated in 1972. The Buffalo River starts with a trickle and runs wild and free for 150 miles into the White River. In the 1960s, the Corps of Engineers' mission was to dam just about every river in the country to create lakes for recreation and to generate hydroelectric power. The Corps had their eyes set on the Buffalo River by building two dams, one close to Gilbert and the other further downstream close to the confluence with the White River. A group of dedicated people formed the Ozark Society who believed that the Buffalo River in its natural state was an essential part of Arkansas's heritage and character, as well as that of the whole Ozark region. After a 10-year battle against the Corps of Engineers, and with the help of bipartisan support from the Arkansas delegation, the Ozark Society was able to protect the buffalo from being dammed and have it managed by the National Park Service. Way down the river where the wide water flows Well tell me John Boat, John Boat, what do you say? Show as the water flows across the me today Up and across the river before daylight the Buffalo River is one of the few remaining undammed streams in the lower 48 and features stunning limestone bluffs. Over 1.1 million people visit the Buffalo River each year. Along the river's routes are old Ozark homesteads such as the Granny Henderson House, an extensive hiking and horseback riding trail system, and 12 different campgrounds. Canoeing, kayaking, and fishing occur year-round depending on the river level. In the 1980s, elk were reintroduced to the park and now are a major tourist attraction. This is Hemden Hollow at 209 feet. It is the tallest waterfall between the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachians. The Buffalo River is also home to four species of endangered bats and two species of endangered bivalves, the snuffbox and the rabbit foot's mussel. Fishing and a swimming and a singing this song Well, we float through the rabbits like a hollow log Old Miss Tripp that makes a dog named Dog Singing John Boat, John Boat, where do you go? Way down the river where the white water flows
where the white water flows, where the white water flows. According to the National Park Service, who manages the river, the Buffalo River remains one of the cleanest and healthiest rivers in our nation. It is not free from pollution, nor the potential impacts from an altered watershed. The river's watershed is comprised of 840,000 acres, with only 11% within the boundaries of the park. Nearly 90% of the water flow is beyond the National Park Service's control. The river's water quality is therefore highly dependent on the surrounding land management practices. In 2012, the park celebrated its 40th anniversary. But while we were celebrating the saving of the buffalo, a stealthy permitting and environmental assessment process was underway. No one knew or was informed of the latest threat to this pristine river, particularly the National Park Service. This is Big Creek at the confluence with the Buffalo River. Big Creek is the fifth largest tributary draining 82 square miles or 6% of the Buffalo's watershed. Less than six miles upstream is CNH, a 6,500 head corporate hog farm and CAFO. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Farm Service Agency and the Small Business Administration approved a $3.4 million loan of public money to build CNH. The Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality, or ADEQ, approved a general CAFO permit saying they had no regulations to stop such an operation. Although the notice of intent was filed with the state on June 25, 2012, the Park Service did not receive any notification until February 5, 2013, almost seven months later. Once the Park Service received the information, they reviewed the environmental assessment and found at least 45 deficiencies in the report such as not considering the CAFO's impact on endangered species, the karst geology of the area, or the proximity to the Buffalo National River. CNH Hog CAFO began operating in June of 2013. Owner Jason Henson was contacted to see if he would allow us to interview him and film his operation. He declined, and we have not been able to find any state or federal official who has been inside the CNH facility since the pigs arrived and it's become operational. Therefore, the photos presented here are from hog CAFOs with similar operations in the United States and not from CNH. Because we were not allowed access to the facility, we reviewed the facility diagrams and it appears that the 2,500 sows are kept in gestation crates, not in larger grouped pens. The sows are unable to turn around or move. They are standing on concrete floors with metal grates underneath to allow the waste to drop below into a pit. The European Union, New Zealand, Tasmania, and nine U.S. states have now banned the use of gestation crates as inhumane. According to the Humane Society, crated sows suffer a number of health problems from their confinement, including poor hygiene, weakened bones, body sores, lameness, and increased respiratory disease. On average, a single sow produces two and a half litters a year, with 10 to 12 piglets in each litter. This adds up to over 62,000 pigs coming out of this CAFO each year. Hogs produce three to eight times more waste than humans. And according to information provided by CNH, the CAFO generates about two million gallons of manure each year. Assuming 4,000 pigs and 2,500 sows daily, this amount of waste generated is equivalent to a city of 30 to 35,000 people, or the population of Newton, Searcy, and Marion counties combined, all from a single CAFO in a single location less than six miles upstream from the Buffalo National River. The non-discharge permit allows CNH to hold up to 2 million gallons of hog waste in two clay-lined ponds. 
The non-discharge permit also allows up to 5,000 gallons per day of untreated hog sewage to seep into the soil. An engineer from ADEQ estimated that 3,400 gallons is leaking daily, or over 1 million gallons of toxic untreated hog waste per year is deposited into the highly permeable car subsurface. The waste from these holding ponds will be sprayed on 17 fields, many directly adjacent to Big Creek and in some places less than a thousand feet from Mount Judy School. Any waste from seepage or manure not utilized by the plants can be washed into Big Creek and then very quickly make its way to the buffalo. There's a big stink on the buffalo down in Arkansas. Things are getting hot down. As part of its nutrient management plan, CNH was permitted to spray manure on 17 different fields. However, 15 of the 17, or 87%, of the acreage was fully saturated or overly saturated with phosphorus, a mineral that can cause nutrification or algal growth in the streams. On December 30th, 2013, CNH started spraying manure on these fields. Although the permit allows CNH to spray any time of the year, the nutrient management plan did not include the calculations to verify that spraying on these fields in wintertime did not exceed the allowed phosphorus levels. The plan called for spraying in the springtime when the plants can absorb some of the nutrients from the manure. Instead, CNH started spraying in the dead of winter when no crops are going. As a result of lobbying by big agriculture, there is very little, if any, state or federal inspection of these facilities. Only the CAFO owner records the type and amount of antibiotics, hormones, or other medication used while the pigs are in their possession. These chemicals and drugs given to the hogs remain in the urine and waste of these animals and persist in the environment. As required by the permit, there is a 100-foot buffer between the manure application fields and Big Creek, but Big Creek floods often. About once every three years, there is a very significant gully washer. These huge floods will wash manure directly into Big Creek and then down to the Buffalo and eventually the White River. The CNH CAFO is contracted to grow out hogs owned by Cargill, one of the largest privately held multinational companies in the world. The company is based in Minnetonka, Minnesota, employs about 142,000 people in 67 countries, and last year enjoyed a $2.3 billion profit. Pork consumption in the United States has remained largely unchanged for the past 40 years while exports have significantly increased with most of the pork headed for China. With the CNH CAFO, the profits from this venture will go to Minnesota, the pigs will go to China, and the toxic waste will be left to the people of Arkansas to deal with. Cargill also has one of the worst environmental and labor records, but clothes itself in environmental partnerships with many international, national, and local organizations. This strategy is called greenwashing, creating an appearance of working towards sustainability while secretly practicing poor environmental stewardship that contaminates our planet and destroys communities. Some of Cargill's environmental partners are the World Wildlife Fund, the Nature Conservancy, and closer to home, Cargill has provided over $50,000 to the Illinois River Partnership and is a Tier 2 founding member of the University of Arkansas's Sustainability Consortium. From a recent Freedom of Information Act request, Cargill has provided over $400,000 to the University of Arkansas Applied Sustainability Center and the Sustainability Consortium. 
Cargill has also provided another $300,000 to the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture. In March of 2014, almost a year after the public found out that CNH Hog CAFO would be built in Mount Judy, Arkansas, the Nature Conservancy continued to accept donations from Cargo. In response to widespread public concern, Governor Mike Beebe allocated $340,000 from the Arkansas State taxpayers to fund a water monitoring and soil sampling project on the CNH manure fields. Without going through a competitive bid or peer review process, the University of Arkansas School of Agriculture was awarded the funding. The team's first quarterly report was released in early February of 2014 and called into question the location of several of the fields where their testing was conducted. Well, we don't want no pigs on the river, no, no, no. We don't want no pigs on the river, no pigs on the buffalo. No pigs on the buffalo, we say no pigs on the A less costly and more comprehensive proposal was submitted by University of Arkansas retired emeritus professor and Ozark hydrologist, Dr. Van Brahana. Dr. Brahana and his team of volunteers are conducting a dye tracing study focused on the main channel and the left fork of Big Creek to determine the flow rate and path of water near the CNH hog CAFO. Recent analysis from the dye tracing study has documented the movement of water from an injection site close to the CNH hog factory, traveling over three miles to the left fork of Big Creek in less than seven days. During the study, volunteers have also documented the appearance of poor water quality by the large algal blooms that are occurring, signifying excessive nutrients in the water, most likely phosphorus or nitrogen, from external sources, such as animal waste. Dr. Compton and the Ozark Society a long time ago took a stand to Why isn't Cargill or CNH paying for the monitoring? Instead, the taxpayers of Arkansas, which ranked 45th out of 50th in education in 2012, are footing the bill. Surely there are more important uses of that money to educate Arkansans rather than subsidizing a multi-billion dollar corporation's highly polluting and highly toxic waste. Of the 500 wealthiest people in the world, six are from the Cargill family. The family retains 88% of the ownership of the company and is the largest privately held company in the world. Want no pigs on the river, no pigs on the buffalo. No pigs on the buffalo, we say no pigs on the buffalo. We don't want no pigs on the river, no, no. It is time for a change in the way we harvest and procure our meat. People don't have to eat pork that comes from CAFOs. There are alternatives such as animal welfare approved farms where hogs are allowed to range freely on pasture and wooded fields. The hogs are then rotated from field to field every four to six weeks and their diet is supplemented with organic minerals and whole grains. You can taste the difference in a healthy, happy, pasture raised hog. CNH claims they will bring jobs to Newton County, which is one of the poorest counties in Arkansas, ranking 71st out of 75th with an average per capita income of just over $27,000 per year. But only six low paying jobs have been created. On the other hand, tourism from the Buffalo River is estimated to employ about 610 workers and generated $44 million in revenue in 2012. If the river is polluted or smells from the hog farm suggest it's polluted, tourism business will likely take a hit. The number of people coming to the Buffalo that rent canoes, stay in cabins, eat at the local restaurants will likely fall. We are a group from uh, Hutchinson, Kansas, Wichita, Kansas area. We've been riding the Buffalo River. This makes my, I don't know, 10th time down the Buffalo River. It needs to be left alone. It needs not to have pig stuff in it. And pollution will lose a lot of the floral and fauna that's normally in that river. 
in the beauty of the whole river. We love it. We decided to come back because we wanted to come back and see the different flora and fauna, which happens in the springtime versus the fall. So that's why we came back in the spring this year. And we don't want that to be messed with by corporate farming. Numerous articles and op-eds have been posted in the press condemning the state permitting process and the deficient environmental assessment. On April 23rd, over 250 citizens protested on the University of Arkansas campus where the Secretary of Agriculture was giving a talk. On May 1st, 400 people stopped to hear a panel discussion at the Fayetteville Public Library. In Jasper, Arkansas, citizens held signs and protested in front of the Ozark Cafe to make the state representatives aware of their concerns. Cargill had sponsored a tour of the CNH Hog Factory, selectively letting in only like-minded politicians and excluding others. In August of 2013, a coalition of four environmental groups, the Buffalo River Watershed Alliance, the Ozark Society, the National Parks and Conservation Association, and the Arkansas Canoe Club filed a lawsuit against the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Farm Service Agency and the Small Business Administration, claiming that these federal agencies had violated the Endangered Species Act and NEPA, the National Environmental Policy Act. On December 2, 2014, a federal judge agreed with them and ordered both agencies to undertake a new environmental assessment and to have the assessment completed within one year. To quell the protest, Cargill privately confessed to many of the leaders of the environmental groups that they had made a mistake in citing the hog factory so close to the Buffalo River and were reviewing their options. But this past August 2014, Cargill announced they were staying put, standing beside CNH. Their plans are to cover the bottom of both waste lagoons with a membrane liner and to cover the top of the first lagoon and flare off the methane gas. CNH plans to test a plasma arc method to incinerate the hog waste. However, this technology is experimental and has not been tried with liquid waste. As much as this operation tries to spin its environmental consciousness and state-of-the-art technology, the people of Arkansas are not buying it. Membrane liners frequently tear. Burning off the methane gas is only adding to climate change and testing a new methodology to dispose of waste in a sensitive special environment is grossly irresponsible. As you in your so what can you do? Call or write the governor and let your voices be heard. Call or write the Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality. And call or write the Arkansas Pollution Control and Ecology Commission. Join the Buffalo River Watershed Alliance or the Ozark Society and get involved. Bring a sign, be polite, and be firm. Farming is alarming, bad for rivers, bad for swine. Now we know that pigs are tasty. You've got poor chops on your mind before the bacon. This is our nation's first national river. We will not go away until our river is safe from large-scale polluting operations. This is our river, and we will fight to keep it clean and pristine forever. But they should not be combined. Factory farming is alarming. Bad for rivers, bad for swine. If they build one next to your home, you'll be stuck forevermore. Cause you can't sell or drink from your well And you can't go out your door We love pigs and we love rivers But they should not be combined Factory farming is alarming Bad for rivers, bad for swine Give ten dollars, give a nickel, give a pen Anything you can contribute
to the cause will be just fine. We love pigs and we love rivers, but they should not be combined. Factory farming is alarming, bad for rivers, bad for swine.